Hello everyone. This video is designed to introduce Code Studio to both students and professors. Now, there's a second video that discusses Cove Editions, uh, which is our uh, flipped classroom and open access publishing space. Uh, Studio is the place where we have all of our encoded texts, over 3 million words of them at this point and where professors can build anthologies, students can log in and access texts and annotate together as a class. To first log in, uh, one needs to uh, pay a very small nonprofit uh, amount of $10. And you do that by clicking on login. Uh, if you've already paid your $10, you click on login through NAVSA, otherwise you click on here and then Cove Only Access. For one year, as I say, it's just $10. Once you've paid uh, for your access, uh, the, you receive a login and password. Uh, and once you uh, receive that, you need to return to Cove Studio and log in through this uh, button. Uh, it's important to actually log in to Cove Studio because that gets you into the system and allows your professor to assign your anthology to you. The first time you log in, you'll see a screen like this one. And also the first time you log in, you'll see no anthologies here, uh, because again, you have to wait for your professor to assign the anthology to you after you've come into the system. But once the anthology has been assigned, the next time you log in, you'll see it appear here under assigned anthologies. You need only click on uh, the link. Uh, I've signed in here as a student. This is a class uh, in Japan, actually. And uh, you'll see your texts. You can uh, alphabetize by author name or by title, so you can more easily find things. And uh, all you need to do is click on the title. Uh, your teacher can also provide a direct link to this document. This is Weathering Heights by actually Emily Bronte, this was her pen name. Uh, you have this filter field that allows you to see just your own annotations or those of the entire group. Once people are assigned to the anthology, they'll appear here. Uh, so you can see, for example, what your professor might have added in to uh, the document as annotations. If it's a long document, this is a novel, uh, it's a good idea to click always on whole document because that shows you all the annotations that appear anywhere within the document. Uh, click on the page anywhere to get rid of that filter field and click up here to uh, return it. Uh, once you get into the uh, document, uh, annotation is super easy. You can annotate either for yourself or for others to see. You simply indicate any text this icon appears and you click on that and you can write whatever you like. In this case, I'll just say that Alice Bell is actually Emily Bronte. One nice thing is that we've made it very easy to add in images or even films. Uh, so you just need to find the image anywhere on the web. Uh, so if I wanna look for Emily Bronte, say, uh, I encourage my own students to use uh, Wikimedia Commons because these images are pretty stable. So you just need to click on the image. That's not, and so you have to get to the JPEG file. This is a wrapper actually. So it's not the actual JPEG file. You just got to click on it again. That takes you to the actual JPEG file. You copy the URL, go back to your annotation and paste it in. It's that easy. So it's super easy to add in images. Again, you can annotate anything uh, you will. Uh, you can then go back and uh, edit your annotation. The important uh, thing to remember is that you have to click on this button. My groups can view this annotation uh, if you want your professor and the other students in the class to see your annotation, which presumably you do. Uh, but you, this way you can keep editing it until you're ready actually to share it. Of course, you can also annotate on your own so that uh, the other people in the class do not see your annotation and you can easily toggle between your own annotations and those that everybody else in the class has made. 
There are also a number of uh, tags here. Uh, some are preset uh, that you can use. It, you should wait to see what your professor wants you to do with these, but they allow you to uh, provide a tag and you can filter for them so that you only see a particular kind of annotation. Just one more thing I'd like to uh, point out, which is that you want to make sure you're looking at the right version of the document. If your teacher has used an anthology, you need to make sure that you're at the version of the document in the anthology, okay? Because it has its own unique uh, uh, URL uh, that's just for that uh, course. You can find the same documents in other places. For example, if you go to Dashboard, uh, you'll see that there's a more complicated screen here. This is more for your professors. Do not click on these versions of the documents. These are different versions. You won't be able to see your professor's annotations or those of your class. Uh, so instead, make sure you go to your ass assigned anthology. Uh, and again, your professor may provide you a direct link to your anthology and to your texts. That's uh, about everything that you need to know as a student to access your anthologies. Uh, if you uh, get lost at any point, you can always go to Cove Editions and click on How To, and we've provided a number of guides uh, to quickly get you uh, started. The next section of this video will be oriented more to teachers and we'll discuss creation of an anthology and uploading of texts. So if you are a teacher, uh, as you saw, it's quite easy to annotate with uh, your class. Uh, truly the hardest part is simply getting everybody together at the right place. And uh, to do that, there's a little bit of a lag time because students need to log in to Cove Studio, so they're a part of this database. And once they've done that, uh, you can assign them to your anthology. And I'll show you how to go about doing that. So to create an anthology, uh, you go to your dashboard. Once there, uh, you'll see the list of anthologies, either those to which you are assigned or those that are your own. Uh, and here you can simply click on Create New Anthology, uh, give it a name, and you can customize it by choosing an image. Uh, I'll just choose a random one here, and uh, create your anthology. Once the anthology has been created, uh, it'll be here listed under Mine. Sample Anthology is what we named it click on that, you'll see my sample image. And this is where you can build the text that you add. You can draw from uh, the over 3 million words of uh, material that we've encoded. Uh, we recommend that you use those that are marked as vetted. Uh, those are ones that we have encoded, so they are properly formatted, line numbers for poetry, properly formatted plays, etc. Uh, also, they are ADA compliant so that the uh, differently cited can access uh, the texts uh, through machine readers. So let's pick a few. Uh, Lewis Carroll, I know, is in there and has uh, is a good example of a text that has uh, important images as a part of the uh, of the text. Let's add those. As you see, I've chosen the ones that are marked as vetted true. Um, We've been uh, increasing the number of texts that we encode from uh, other periods. Uh, so here is the Tempest. It's still marked as false because it's getting uh, checked by our administrative directors. Uh, but it looks actually pretty good. I'm going to assign it to the anthology. Or let's say uh, Milton. There's Paradise Lost. Some excerpts. Once you've picked all of your texts, uh, you click on All. And you can see uh, the texts uh, of your anthology. I've already showed you how to annotate, but uh, again, you can uh, order your texts by clicking on these uh, title or author. 
and your students then can easily access those texts. Now, to assign students uh, to your anthology, they need first to have logged in. Once they have, uh, you simply click on users and do a search for those individual users. It's a good idea here to just use the last name. I find that to be the easiest way. Or you can even use a part of an email. So for example, uh, if I do a purdue.edu search, uh, that will bring me up uh, all of the users at Purdue. There's a lot of them because we've been using it longer than anybody else. Uh, but basically, you can assign any uh, student uh, that's in the database to your anthology. Okay, uh, And uh, then later, click all to see everyone. So far, just can crawl. It's a good idea to uh, add yourself as well uh, so that uh, the uh, anthology appears also in your list of uh, assigned anthologies. So I'm going to assign myself. I guess so if I go back to all right now there are just two people uh, assigned to this anthology. Uh, I can go back to my documents and if I go to, say, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and click on uh, All Users, you'll see that uh, the two people I've assigned are here. As I mentioned at the first part of the video, you have these tags that you can use. This allows you to um, uh, filter for particular kinds of annotations. You, you can also create your own tag scheme as I mentioned in the first part of the video, uh, one thing that's nice about this approach is that you can build your own anthologies, easily draw on the content that we've made available, and uh, you have your own dedicated URL for your anthology, uh, as well as a dedicated URL for each individual document. So you can take this uh, URL and add it directly into your uh, learning management system. I'll show you how that works. Here's mine uh, from this last semester. Uh, we use Brightspace at Purdue. And as long as students are logged into your LMS, your learning management system, as well as to Cove Studio, uh, and you've provided a link to your documents, accessing those documents is as easy as clicking and being sent directly to that individual document. I'm showing just the my annotations here. If I click on groups, you can see the actual annotations that my students did uh, this semester. Okay, They uh, made the use of the images uh, to show us K uh, King George III. Uh, one of them mentioned in class this last semester, hey, isn't that the same King George III uh, from Hamilton, uh, which was great. So I, uh, I, I immediately showed, gave them uh, that uh, solo. George Washington's yielding his power and stepping away. Is that true? Uh, so as you see, it's very easy to share images, share videos, and very easy for students to uh, add those, uh, that material into their annotations as well. If you wish to add a document of your own, you need uh, only click on Create New Document. Uh, I think it's always better to paste directly into the form because you have more control over the document. Most Too many PDFs don't work properly. Um, so if I, uh, let's say I'm interested in uh, the 18th century and this poem, say, is not available yet at Cove Studio. I can find it somewhere, copy the text, and paste it into my uh, form here. Uh, I can uh, change the look of it. Let's say make a, that a header. This a subheader, for example. Uh, Good idea to uh, give the last name first. Uh, as I say, you 
You want to make sure that you're happy with the document before you switch it to annotatable uh, because uh, once you switch over, you can't change the source text because of the way annotations are anchored. So uh, let's create it and make sure we're happy with the document. These are my documents. There it is. Once I set it to annotatable, that uh, filter screen will appear here. That looks okay. So I'm going to go back to my documents, my documents. So I go back to my document and click edit, set it to annotatable and update. Uh, here was my anthology from the fall. I can uh, search for the text I just added. There it is. I can assign that to my anthology. Okay. Now I go back to all. Uh, sort it. There's a hymn to the moon. And uh, this is a class that I've already assigned. So all the students are here. Uh, as soon as I've added it, uh, this group that's part of this anthology can follow this link to the document and uh, begin annotating. As I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, you can always go to Cove Editions to find uh, how-to pages. Uh, there are also uh, frequently asked questions uh, page that you can access, as well as uh, resources to give you ideas uh, as you work with Cove tools. There are articles, uh, by past users, as well as uh, resources, syllabi uh, by uh, past users, that's the class I showed you of mine from this last fall, for example, as well as uh, guides that other uh, instructors have put together, uh, including this one here uh, by Lorraine Jansen Quistra, who used her graduate class as a mechanism for creating an edition. Uh, that she then published uh, at uh, Cove Studio. If you are interested in doing that, please email coveditions at gmail.com so I can provide you with guidance. Lorraine Jansen Quistra successfully uh, created uh, that edition with her graduate class. It went through peer review and is now available here at Cove Editions. Uh, with material put together by her students, including uh, their annotations. Never hesitate to uh, send queries to coveditions at gmail.com. That email is monitored by all six of our administrative directors, as well as myself, and we try very hard to respond as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you very much.